What's up guys, my name is Jake, and welcome to Abandoned, episode 57. Epcot in Walt Disney World is sort of known for its bizarre limbo state of partially abandoned structures and former attractions. That's being rectified, eh, sort of. But there is no better example of that period of time more so than one massive and iconic pavilion. One that had a slow and painful death until it was stuck in time and left abandoned. So join me today as I take another updated look at the history, the downfall, and the future of Epcot's Wonders of Life. With the release of this video, I have opened up a brand new Bright Sun Film store with exclusive postcards of some of my favorite former and abandoned Disney attractions. Get them today by going to shopbrightsunfilms.com or by clicking the link in the description below. The idea of building Epcot had been circling around the Walt Disney Company ever since Walt Disney died. It wasn't until the mid to late 1970s that the success of the Magic Kingdom proved that more expansion was warranted. Eventually, a general idea of how Epcot Center should be laid out was decided, and the pavilions that would populate Future World were chosen. In most concepts, the themes were consistent and actually made it to construction. However, other ideas like a health-related pavilion were being switched in and out of the proposal. By 1978, life and health had its concept come together, as it was planned to be a structure to educate guests on modern-day medicine and healthy lifestyles. Visitors to the Life and Health Pavilion will experience a new awareness and appreciation of themselves. The incredible journey within will take guests to explore the inner workings of the complex human machine. Learning that good health is based more than anything else on their own personal responsibility and behavior. The original concept was to be laid out in a circular format with the center core called the Great Midway of Life. Spoked around it would be several interactive exhibits and shows. The main attraction, however, would be the Omnimover Dark Ride through the Human Circulatory System. That dark ride, though, proved to be rather complex, especially with the enormous moving set pieces it called for. The entire pavilion was pretty large, which also meant expensive, so finding a sponsor became quite difficult. The company ultimately moved forward with Epcot Center, finalizing Phase 1 of the park, leaving a future plot of land if the pavilion was able to get a budget. Epcot Center opened in 1982, very much over budget, with four Future World pavilions and two more on the way. It wasn't until the late 1980s, though, when the company was able to secure MetLife as a sponsor for the once shelved pavilion. With a new name, The Human Dynamic, planning reopened almost a decade after they had started. By now, the team had evolved their health pavilion, changing major parts about it. Everything from the dark ride attraction to even how the building looks. They decided to focus on one core theme, human fitness and health. Keeping the carnival aesthetic, they decided to go with a 65-foot dome, encompassing around 50,000 square feet of interior floor space. A show building would also be erected out the back of the structure, with another 50,000 square feet or so. Instead of a traditional dark ride which most of Epcot already had, they wanted to do something more thrilling and cutting edge. Star Tours had just opened in Disneyland with a brand new motion simulator ride, and that exact ride system was taken and used to develop a new e-ticket attraction within this new pavilion called Body Wars, a thrilling simulator ride through the human body, directed by Leonard Nimoy. So, with Metropolitan Life helping with some building and upkeep costs, Disney began construction on the now-named Wonders of Life. It's estimated that the project cost at least $90 million, or almost $200 million today. A staggeringly high price tag. The pavilion opened with Disney's new CEO, Michael Eisner, on October 19, 1989. Wonders of Life was very popular in its first few years open. Body Wars was the first of its kind on the East Coast, at least for now. That made it a big draw for the already older crowds in Epcot, offering the first thrilling attraction behind the gates. But it was also what the pavilion additionally offered that made it so great. Imagineers intentionally made it the most colorful and vibrant pavilion in Epcot, an attempt to turn what normally is a pretty dreary and uninteresting subject like staying healthy into something fun and lighthearted. The smaller shows and exhibits within perfectly balanced the line of fun, yet also educating. 
Next to Body Wars was Cranium Command, a theater show depicting the inner thoughts of a human brain performed by animatronics. Elsewhere in the pavilion was two other theater shows, one being The Making of Me, explaining how humans are conceived, yes, and Goofy About Health, essentially just a mashup of past Goofy cartoons visualizing how healthy lifestyles can benefit your life. Dotted around these are mostly interactive exhibits, notably Sensory Funhouse, which tested all of your senses in creative ways, Wonder Cycles, which had you pedaling against a simulated screen, and Frontiers of Medicine, which brought guests through an always updating visual showcase of medical breakthroughs. Alongside these activities was a small store where you can buy sports and athletic gear, and a counter-service restaurant cooking up light and healthy meals. Outside, the unique Golden Dome sat at the end of a winding, lush pathway in between the universe of energy and horizons. A massive 75-foot-tall DNA strand stood as the monument, right beside a golden archway displaying the pavilion's name. Overall, Wonders of Life was an original, creative, and vibrant way to educate people on the most important modern health issues. It was everything Epcot Center stood for, and the pavilion was a great success and generally liked by the millions of people who visited. However, this golden era of the pavilion, as well as Epcot, was quickly coming to an end. By the early 2000s, Epcot Center was changing. Horizons had already been demolished and the World of Motion had become a thrill ride called Test Track. Pretty much all of the original Future World pavilions had been changing. Wonders of Life was starting to become a bit dated, yet with the sponsor, it still had received regular updates and the proper upkeep. That was until December of 2000, when MetLife's contract to sponsor the pavilion had come up. The company decided not to renew since they were, quote, putting our money in a different place, since those sponsorship costs were in the, quote, low millions. This termination was formally announced in June of 2001, and soon after, all mentions of the MetLife brand were removed. This is a big deal since now Disney had to flip the bill on the entire aging pavilion, and finding a replacement sponsor for Wonders of Life would be a challenge. The pavilion carried on for another few years, with a noticeable decline in updates and care. After the holiday rush of early 2004, Disney announced the pavilion would be moving to a seasonal operating schedule starting January 4th. This now meant the pavilion would only open during peak times in the year where lots of guests were in Epcot, basically a way to add park capacity. Of course, this is not a good sign for an attraction, and what was inside really didn't fare better either. By 2005, it was pretty apparent that the pavilion was well out of date, and that's not even regarding the condition of the attractions, as guests now began reporting that rides were worn out and frequently breaking down. Exhibits in general were just closed here and there. Remember Frontiers of Medicine, the walkthrough showcase of modern day breakthroughs? Well, there you can learn all about what the scientific community was doing in 2001, or maybe just don't go in at all. Really, the entire pavilion was frozen in its early 2000s state, which, all considered, just dissuaded guests from visiting. Basically, all the attractions had no weights, including body wars. Wonders of Life was no longer a must-do at Epcot, and its days were numbered. By the conclusion of the 2006 holiday season, Disney announced the Wonders of Life pavilion, including all of its attractions, would close permanently on January 1st, 2007. No official reason was ever given for the closure, but among cast members, it was an open secret that Disney had been winding down the pavilion's operations and preparing for a permanent closure. It can be inferred, however, that without a sponsor, Disney didn't want to take on the costs associated with running it. Considering the marquee attraction was just a clone of Star Tours, which was in the park next to Epcot, and the fact that it had a reputation for making people sick, it was likely considered not much of a sacrifice since everything else in Wonders of Life was quite dated. However, after the closure, nothing really ever happened. Wonders of Life was left in a state of limbo. What's even more strange is that by the end of the year, Disney had decided to utilize the space not for the attractions, but to host their annual food and wine festival there. So by the end of 2007, all Wonders of Life signage had been replaced with what they called the Festival Center. However, since the organizers only had a few months to prepare, once guests entered, the building was almost completely unchanged to how it looked when Wonders of Life was open eight months prior. Pretty much everything inside 
remained as it was, including the small carnival structures, their color schemes, the cues, and even the signs, including Body Wars. By 2008 and 2009, Wonders of Life continued to host their seasonal events, now having more and more theming elements from the past removed. However, hidden behind the curtains in the show buildings, the former Body Wars and Cranium Command attractions sat untouched and abandoned. It was rumored around this time that the Body Wars simulators had been removed. Allegedly, they were being used for spare parts for the cloned attraction in Hollywood Studios. For the next few years, the pavilion continued to be a temporary place for Epcot's annual festivals, now with little changes inside and obvious neglect to the exterior Golden Dome. But even before its closure in 2007, Disney was seeking out new ideas for its ever-valuable space. Redevelopment plans have been in the works for years. Wonders of Life was clearly outdated, and with it no longer being advertised by the company after 2001, Disney was getting ready to change things up. Back in 2003, Disney Imagineering was exploring a concept called Epcot Discoveryland, which was a dramatic transformation of Future World. This never came to fruition, but what's intriguing in this master plan is the Wonders of Life Pavilion, which just at the time had lost its sponsor a few years prior, had a label, Replacement for Wonders of Life. That indicates, at least in some way, development plans were in the works or at least being thought of. Over the years since, there have been plenty of rumors and demolition permits, yet nothing ever happened. Imagineers and Disney executives have been seen walking around the structure, but it appeared that progress was very slow, as it was for really any updates in Epcot. It's likely that the pavilion acting as the festival center was generating money on its own, selling merchandise and wine, giving Disney no real rush to move forward. By the late 2010s, however, Wonders of Life was a shell of its former self. For most months of the year, the pavilion sat empty, and for the main attractions in the back, completely abandoned. By this point, Body Wars had its simulator base empty and mostly used for storage. However, the queue for this ride, as well as other rooms like the ride operations, were stuck in time from 2007. Interestingly, the Body Wars queue was actually slightly altered to accommodate new wine racks. They were placed all along the themed corridor just before you entered loading. On the other side of the show building sat the theater for Cranium Command. This attraction was in even better shape, since the entire room was left exactly the same. The theater was never used for food and wine, so Epcot never removed or changed anything in here. Within the dark theater was the stage showpieces, mainly the animatronic called Buzzy. That animatronic was actually stolen in December of 2018. Urban exploration footage prior to the disappearance showed the animatronic had a Do Not Destroy tag, likely meaning it was slated to be put in the archives. Disney reported it stolen with a value of around $400,000, and not long after, a colossal egotistical idiot who ran a Twitter account posting backstage photos was caught by local authorities. Apparently, he had stolen several clothing items from Buzzy and sold them to an NBA player who was a big fan of Wonders of Life. It's an insane story, and the case remains ongoing. The animatronic has still not been found. By summer of 2017, an update to Future World was announced, yet nothing was really ever said about Wonders of Life. That was until February, two years later, when Disney finally confirmed that the former Wonders of Life would become the Play Pavilion. It's planned to be filled with interactive experiences and hands-on activities, all within a futuristic enclosed city. It appears that it will be under what looks like a projection mapping effect on the dome ceiling, and it's slated for a 2021 opening. So, obviously this is a more kids-friendly approach, with a heavy emphasis on younger guests. It's definitely a different approach to what Wonders of Life was supposed to be about, but will serve its purpose as the one pavilion which will cater specifically and entirely to that age demographic. But does that make it a worthy successor? Eh. On one hand, I personally believe that any new development there is a good thing. Festival Center was a cheap way to make space for something that had so much more potential, like much of modern Epcot. I think it's also important to remember that while so many people have fond memories of the past attractions, its later years after 2001 were pretty rough. Guest satisfaction of wonders had plummeted, and to be fair, that is Disney's fault, but I think regardless, its closure was a long time coming. Looking at pictures of the pavilion from 2006 really shows how utterly outdated 
faded and gaudy it was. This style may have looked good in 1989, but not in 2006. On the other hand though, the whole point of the pavilion was to showcase healthy habits and educate while also entertain. That's a difficult thing to achieve, and I think Wonders of Life did it, and did it well. What's replacing it is a relatively easy, cheap, and intellectual property-based series of small attractions a phrase which is ever more common amongst the Disney parks these days. But now, as the former Wonders of Life is gutted and construction begins, whatever future this pavilion and park travels into, the people who visited back in the 80s and 90s will always remember the golden era of the pavilion, an era of creativity and curiosity, one that took a decade to develop and cost hundreds of millions of dollars in investment. Ultimately, the attractions only lasted full-time for around 14 years, and sat abandoned for an additional 13. In the grand scheme of things, that's honestly an extremely short lifespan of an attraction, especially one at that cost and scale. But whatever happens to the big gold dome in the corner of Future World, I think for a lot of people, it will always be known as the Wonders of Life. Thanks for watching this episode of Abandoned, and if you're like me and take a particular interest in abandoned theme park locations, well, I have actually just started a small online shop for Bright Sun Films. Right now, you can pick up an exclusive set of postcards from three now-abandoned Disney attractions. From River Country to Discovery Island and the Skyway from my last episode. It's a limited run of just 50 each right now, so if you're interested, head over to shopbrightsunfilms.com. A link will also be in the description below. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.